this is Athena Jezik, and I'm back again to talk about feet today. What I'm also doing here now is I'm going along the arches of the feet from the ball of the foot, moving along the arch, and just putting a little tiny bit of pressure on it, feeling how that is. Sometimes you feel like the arch is a little out of alignment, it feels fallen. Yeah, the feet are pretty important and they are neglected. We tend to stick them in a shoe. Sometimes the shoes aren't really good for our feet. And then people's feet start hurting and they wonder why, but they never really think about the alignment of their feet. So I'm here, I'm on the pad, kind of the ball of the foot, the pad of the foot, padding there, and I'm just doing a little pressing on the bottom. All of this is for the um, checking for flexibility and movement between each toe, which the toes run down much farther than what we see. There's a big joint here. And checking range of motion. This is a good uh, flexible toe because if she were to stand on her toes, there's the f that my, my finger the floor, she'd be able to stand on the floor and she's got a good arch. <clears throat> so in the case of standing on our toes to reach for something, we also want to make sure that our ankle is good and strong because the tendency is to always um, allow the foot to kind of go that way so you'd stand on your toes and fall into the outside like so and then that is how people sprain their ankles quite often that's how their ankles get sprained they land on their foot and it's maybe they come down and land on their foot but it's not sturdy enough their ankle isn't strong enough so they fall into it this way and roll into it so it's important when you're working your feet and your ankles to work the muscles on the side to keep that strong on that side, on the outside, on the lateral side of the ankle. So that way, if you stand on your toes, you have a really strong support because this isn't much to stand on considering there's a whole body on top of it. But it can be done if the ankles are strong. And if you're in alignment, it's even easier, of course. So just a little tidbit there. So we're back wiggling the toes and the middle of the feet. And now we're getting into the ankle. Just checking the ankle bone. The flexibility is definitely there. Now, what happens if you find somebody that's not very flexible with a lot of this? Well, we want to loosen up the joints, and some joints of feet that I've seen are, are so inflamed and misshapen that there's not much that really feels like is done except at a very, very subtle level. And it does help them to feel a little bit better. You know, if their feet are, are really all mashed together where the toes come on top, like sometimes people's feet do, their toes squish in like that, and that's how they are, or some conglomeration of that sort of thing. Those are hard to separate, but you can work with it. And one way to work with it is to begin with each toe, starting down at the base of the joint and just moving it in a, like circles back and forth in these circles going the opposite direction and then maybe sliding it back and forth and holding below it so that it's stable enough so that you are just moving the joint. And you can do that through each toe, the circles, and that starts to loosen things up. It's kind of like, uh, you know, just like letting the joint, if it's gotten stuck with whatever, it's starting to like break up anything in there that might be holding the joint in place. And then of course we have the, the 
joints up here that can be moved back and forth opposite they 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 don't have a lot of um, movement but they if you go back and forth with them it's like draining them in fact it is a way to drain the lymph inside of a joint and you don't want to do it with a lot of force you want to still be gentle with it you can do that with this joint too but just to, to make it circle and you can also do little circles with these other joints out here so you know the joint is really important to keep flexible because the feet are really there for balance and all these little toes are important for balance and if you you know miss a toe even the little pinky you, your balance is completely different so that's an important thing to remember about feet um, and then there's the you want your toes to be fairly separated and I am probably gonna experiment with something later on in this video for you to give you some ideas of what you can do and then we want to have this part of the foot flexible as well so I'm really showing a lot more of joint mobility than I am actual massage in the foot because this is important and it also feels good now you can also take it now here we are into that ankle and you want to flex the ankle and make circles too with it but you can also tell how strong the ankle is once you know what to look for and then the other part of the foot that is rarely thought of as joints is there's a joint back behind here it's a cuboid there's two other joints uh, or bones and that's attached to the heel so they're little tiny joints in deeper in the foot and it's nice to remember them and bring them a little bit of attention and the heel itself also has some range of motion but it's not much but it does have some range of motion so that's another spot that you can can work and get a little bit of range of motion going there so I'm going to do similar things on the other side to get a little different angle on what I just did now oh, here's the foot and the arch so I started out by just moving the toes and I may be a little bit out of sequence, but basically I hope I remember to cover all the bases. So you work the toes a little bit and check the, check the, uh, the arch of the foot. Just small presses. You don't have to press hard at all. It might look like I'm pressing hard, but I'm really not. I'm much more, um, my in intention and attention is really on where I'm placed. It's more like placement than um, pushing into it. So where is my finger placed on that arch? And I want it to be right along the bone or a little bit to the side of it. And then up into the pad, pads of the feet. And just press that along. Just let that go. You can also, I think I didn't show that, but you can also flex and extend that here as well as this way. I'm pretty sure I missed that on the other side. So just, you know, you'll just play with it. There's a lot of things you can do. Nothing's wrong if you forget something. Just do try to do about the same thing on each foot though. So now we're going to work the work the toes, getting them flexible. Although these are very flexible toes, we'll pretend like they're not. So there's the little draining part, stabilizing at your below fingers, and it's just holding. You have to hold with a little bit of pressure because you don't want it to follow. You don't want them to follow. You want to make sure that you're getting two different motions out of there. It's not really a natural way for it to go, but it has a little flexibility there. So be gentle. And then all the other toes, same thing. Get those
those joints going. Now what I'm seeing, you can kind of tell, I'll show you that in a minute. So you just go through the toes and to the foot. Finding the joint of the cuboid side, you know, opening that up. Checking the ankle. And the heel, you can flex the heel. What, what we want to watch for is we want these toes to stay straight, stretched out st as straight as possible and not be where they're naturally starting to bend because that's where you're going to get the problems if they're starting to bend, to have them be straighter. And you can do exercises raising up and down on your toes and spreading your toes. Now, there's something I'm going to try because... I do like the toe spreading idea. So this is some stuff that um, Karina got from Yoga Body. Yeah, thanks. And so this is toe spreaders, and I'm not sure exactly how to work these because the kind that I'm familiar with don't look like this. They're just on the bottom part, but they look pretty interesting. They're very soft, which is good. And I guess it's kind of tricky to put them on. It's kind of like putting on a really tight pair of britches. Only, boy, I'm glad I don't have that many legs. Okay, so that would be how your toes would affect. That's not bad, actually. <laughs> So you could wear that and get your toes to start to spread, if, especially if they're crisscrossed on top of each other. This doesn't feel overly aggressive. Some of them are real aggressive and really almost hard. This has a pretty big space in it. It might be too much for some of you. But that's, um, that's a way of spreading the toes, which could help the health of your feet. Um, especially if they're having some problems with the toes being kind of squashed together or on top of one another. You know, you might have to just maybe start out with cotton balls, but maybe you could get to the point. Uh, I think they're pretty good, actually. They have a nice contour with the foot. So, okay, well, anyway, whatever that's worth, that was a little experiment that I just checked with. I haven't tried them on my feet, but they looked pretty comfortable on Lucy's feet, and they weren't that hard to get on. So give it a shot if your feet are feeling like you need to take. In fact, that looks like it already did a little bit of stretching them wider. Well, maybe not, because her toes are pretty wide anyway. Um, well, anyway, that would be a good thing. If you do go for something like that, though, I would strongly recommend that you do it. You, you become loyal to it and you get your attention on it, that you're going to, to do it until it can make a difference. Because it does take the body a little time to change patterns. So, and the feet have been probably put into the wrong size of shoes long for a long time to get as wrinkled as they are. So be patient with it and uh, be kind to your feet. Just be nice to them. So we've got the ankle, and we've got the arches of the feet, and we've got everything there, and then you can also just check down the tops of the feet. And you can just run your fingers in. Now, I haven't been using oil because there's not really any need right now. I'm not I'm doing different work than massage, although massage is very much still a part of, of it all. But I don't need to use any oil on her. Her skin is very soft. Uh, it moves well with my skin. The viscosity feels nice. And 
ankle. Okay, so. That's a little something that you can do for the feet. It's nice to work on each other's feet, so you can kind of work and also have it done yourself <laughs> if you know how to <laughs> sit right. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Hope you got something out of this video. I want to invite you to explore my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment. It is going to take you beyond the work of massage therapy. It will take you into the world of the subtle anatomy. Misalignment of the subtle structures is often the root cause of chronic pain, injuries, and chronically high levels of stress hormones. In this course, you will learn about the subtle anatomy and a protocol for assessing and aligning the subtle structures.